Do not do attempt not to, to defy, defy my android. android. I, I am Necrothinker. Your team colors are hella gay. Yellow is mad ineffective as camo. You will be pwned for achievement. Who is this now? That would be the Necrothinker. Ah, I see. What's his deal? Ivan? He's Retrothinker, but not exactly. He's like a presence, an evil alternate personality that takes him over when he uses that Earth Stone. He brings dead and forgotten video game characters back to life as zombies which are under his control. You know, your mythos makes even less sense in person than it does in the historical records. Rise. Awesome sauce, zombies, and without even having to drop mad loot on DLC. Achievement unlocked. Can that thing beat the Robo-Finger? Possibly. But then it's just gonna turn around and target us. Cross that bridge when you come to it, guys. We've still got problems of our own. Jeez, those two are persistent. This whole thing is completely out of control. Ivan, Omega-Thinker and I can handle the ninjas. You get back to headquarters. What for? Dr. Beardo should still be there. Dr. Beardo? The man who built the Robothinker? Yes, the guy who built the Robothinker. He's on our side. I'll explain. Get back there and have him run Protocol Ericsson. What's a Protocol Ericsson? I'll explain later. Just do it. But, sir... What, Ivan? Um, what about the episode? Huh. It's actually a good question. You do it. On the way. On my own? Sir, I... Yeah. I think you're ready. Welcome to the big leagues, intern. Yes, sir. Alright. I assume these two are tougher than they look? Like the man said, who wants to live forever? This whole thing is getting out of hand, completely falling apart right around us. Much like many people think the games industry is. Yeah, how's that for a segue? You know, the term crash has bad implications in any industry, but video games is one of the only ones where it calls to mind thoughts of outright Armageddon. I mean, just recently the stock market pretty much crashed, and even though it was pretty bad and everyone remembers how bad it was the last time that went down, the main people panicking were the guys in charge. Most people, correctly or not, seem to react with, yeah, this sucks, but I'll live. When things went south for fast food, the king, the clown, and the colonel were all, okay, let's come up with some shit that only costs a dollar. When music retail got napstered, the record companies discovered microtransactions. When video stores went down, porn stores Stars got webcams. In most businesses, a crash is something that people generally expect, often incorrectly, that they'll be just savvy enough to walk away from. But in gaming culture, crash is something you don't say unless we're talking about the bandicoot. And nobody talks about the bandicoot these days either. Because in video games, console gaming in particular, the last time there was a real crash, it was the real end of the world. In 1983, a number of factors, primarily but by no means exclusively, a glut of unsellable content and dissatisfied consumers and retailers resulting from industry leader Atari's lax licensing standards created a market crash that effectively killed the entire home console market, resulting in thousands of jobs lost in an industry wasteland that languished until the Nintendo Entertainment System came along to fill the vacuum later. Even people in gaming who weren't part of the industry at the time have spent the majority of their existence as gamers and or gaming professionals with the specter of the crash hovering over them in one way or another. In particular, averting a second crash becomes a blanket justification for every developer, unfriendly or consumer-hostile rights management practice from the Nintendo seal of quality in the 80s to always online DRM today. 
away. And yet, for all the attempts to stave it off, my feeling is that it might not be avoidable. The overthinker has me studying the history of the industry for as long as I've been his intern, theorizing that a companion fairy's capacity for thinking outside human conceptions of time and space might afford greater insight into the trajectory of the medium. I don't know if that's true or not, but what I do know is that if I can read the signs better than others, what they're saying is that for all our firewalls and contingency plans, a second crash might not only be inevitable, it could be soon. I don't mean for that to alarm anyone. I'm not suggesting that the games industry or even game consoles will vanish from the earth. The industry is, at last, too massive for that to be allowed to happen. But then, too big to fail didn't really save the banks, either. It just took the fatal part out of fatal wounds. The fact is, unless we're talking about a product as vital in its basic form as, say, oil, the bigger an industry gets, the more diverse it needs to be in order to sustain itself. And diversity doesn't just mean occupying two extremes. The auto industry can't just make sports cars and shit boxes. It has to make sedans and minivans, too. The restaurant industry couldn't survive if it was only fancy restaurants and Taco Bell. It needs Applebee's and Denny's and whatever Guy Fieri shit is called. You need a middle, in other words. A center. And right now, the games industry just doesn't have a center. You've got your big AAA blockbusters, you've got your little mobile cheapies, but there really isn't any gradation between them. That's a problem, because it's created an industry that requires constant growth and ever-expanding extravagance just to remain stable. And all the signs are pointing toward growth and expansion, either having momentarily peaked or being damn close to it. And most industries don't handle a peak very well, with companies preferring to hit the tipping point, banking as much money as possible, than bailing before things go to hell. That seems seems to be what EA is up to right now. And if you're not going to gradually climb down from a peak, the only way down is to fall. And falls end in crashes. Oh, look, we're here! No! Ah! You must be Ivan! Dr. Beardo, I presume? What are you doing? Well, I wasn't watching bootleg Siberian porn. Whatever. Look, things are going to hell out there with your Android. The Overthinker wants you to get on that computer and run the file Protocol Ericsson. Yes, yes, of course. I'll do what I can. A teleporter? Why don't you two use this more often? It's still a prototype. He never quite made it work. But... Ah, oh, but me being a scientist, he figures I'll have a better shot. I'll do what I can. Let's try this. Well, that's certainly not it. Let's remember that button, though. So if things are going so bad out there, who's doing today's episode? You're looking at him. Ah, oh, anything I can do to help? Any thoughts on the likelihood of an impending games industry crash? You know, it's funny you should mention that. You see, Ivan, if there's one thing my studies have shown me about game console lifespans, it's that there's never really a set date for when one generation of game console ends and another begins. You can typically date it to when the next wave starts getting announced and revealed. By that metric, we're now about one year into the slowish rollout of the next gen, and so far every major new arrival has been met either by apathy or outright disdain. The 3DS open soft, the Wii U, the first real next generation console to hit shelves, is selling okay but far below the standards set by its predecessor. And even if you don't go along with the logic that Nintendo products don't count anymore, I don't, but whatever, things don't look any rosier. I know what you mean. The PS Vita is a dud, and the much ballyhooed PS4 launch was received with a resounding meh. And when you consider the dynamic that emerged this last generation, with the Wii as the deliverer of catchy gimmicks and nostalgigasms, and the PS3 as a slick, sexy gadget porn beast, with the 360 as the workhorse, that ain't good news. Because if the specs fetishists aren't losing their shit over those big, sexy numbers in the PS4 feature list, and the Nintendo kids can't even muster a cheer for the Wii U simply existing, it means this business might have finally hit a passion deficit. And in an industry that's willingly ceded the existence of middle ground to the point that one-time mid-scale time killer like Sim City gets puffed up with extraordinarily AAA bloat until it finally collapses spectacularly under its own weight and takes EA and battled CEO with it. Forcing a scenario where bloated, inflated first-week sales that rely on hype-driven blind buys, pre-orders, and brand loyalty, lack of passion might as well be lack of breathable air. It's a simple question, really. Consumer apathy plus inefficient, overstuffed industry only leads in one direction, and that direction is a crash. So how bad do you think it'd be if we did crash? 
Well, it wouldn't be like 83. The more fitting comparison might be the breakup of the Hollywood studio system in the late 1960s, but the infrastructure of the two industries is different. If we have a crash, let's say one big enough that it basically takes down the console market entirely like last time, gaming would survive. In fact, with stick in the mud Nintendo and big bully Sony out of the picture, it might even thrive, but the form it would take would be completely unrecognizable to us today, potentially. How so? Well, console gaming has endured as long as it has, largely by offering experiences that other platforms couldn't. Easier to maintain than PCs, more long-term affordable and convenient than arcades. In 83, they went away because the market was being mishandled, but they came back because they were wanted and needed. Now, I'm not so sure. No, people still like consoles, even love them. Oh, yes, yes, they do, but enough people? Things have changed, Ivan. If consoles fall, the longtime faithful will be upset, but a great deal of folks will just assume it's some kind of natural obsolescence and move on to tablets or whatever the new toy is. Non-PC home gaming would probably reappear in some form of television-centric streaming service, but it would likely be closer to biggified versions of the mobile scene than what we know today. So is there no hope? Well... That'd be an extreme scenario. What could save the console makers themselves is that by now, all of them, even Nintendo amazingly enough, have gotten on board with streaming downloads. So the unsustainable money pit that is the AAA game market, that could fall in the drink, and a transition to a more manageable system of downloads, perhaps where we'd have a sane pricing structure where a 10-hour distraction and a massive quest don't have the same basic price point just because. In that case, a crash wouldn't be the end of games, but a certain type of game-centric stores. Ah, so goodbye to GameStop, then. And nothing of value would be lost. You mean aside from all those people's jobs, of course. Well, I mean... No, no, I, I understand your sentiment, believe me. Just trying to inject some humanism into the standard condemnation. So, how do you think we'll know if there's a crash coming definitively? Well, you're the overthinker's intern, Ivan. You tell me. Well, you can't relaunch a console, so even though the Wii U will likely start pushing more plastic once the usual Nintendo big guns make their appearances, and once the PS4 has something to show off besides numbers and tech demos, it might be more compelling to the general public than to the gaming press. We'll probably still move units. And the next Xbox, unless it's some kind of Wii-style wow, that's totally new and different scenario, which is unlikely, I don't see what's going to excite people about it. It'll sell, but it won't be like a new iPhone or anything. Basically, I think the reality is the theme of this generation's last day has been anger and apathy on the part of the consumers. All this bullshit with DRM and pricing, EA's crap, it's clearly affected people's willingness to spend money on the hobby, and it's looking like the industry will be contracting in the next generation. Lower sales numbers across the board, maybe an outright revolt at the fixed pricing world, that sort of thing. The question is, how will the companies react to it? If they buckle down and say, okay, new paradigm, new rules, let's restructure and survive this, then maybe we make it. But if they freak out like, well, everything's over, we might as well just drive off the the cliff, then we're kind of screwed, and I hope that's not the case. Couldn't have said it better myself, Ivan. Now, let's get back to this teleportation business. Lock on the overthinker. Let's try it. Good job, Doc. Now get the Omega Thinker. What just happened? We have a teleporter now. A teleporter? Awesome. I'm from the future, a timeline where your robo-thinker nearly wiped out all of humanity. It's just weird seeing you here. To us, you're basically Hitler's mom. Oh, yes, well, I hope you'll see that I'm trying to prevent that here. No, no, we're, we're cool, we're cool. In fact, with a few more keystrokes, I believe I can teleport into deep space and be done with it for good. No, don't! Why not? We tried Deep Space Exile in my timeline. It didn't work. He just came back. Then our best option is to just let Necrothinker take him out. Whatever the aftermath, at least we already beat him once. It's a known quantity. Except... Except what? Except without us there to hold them back, there's no telling what'll happen if Cryothinker and Pyrothinker back up the android. Three of them might be too much for even Necrothinker. Indeed. Especially since, if I recall correctly, the 
combination of their powers is what allowed you to destroy the Necrothinker in the first place. So what do we do? I've got it! I'm all ears, Ivan. We teleport the ninjas here. Here? Yeah, Overthinker, catch! We've got plenty of weapons just like that, and there's four of us. We zap them here, we take them out, Necrothinker can fight uninterrupted, and we can grill the ninjas about exactly what their role in all of this is. That's... that's actually a really good plan. Very good, in fact. Make it so, Doc. Hey, Ivan. Yes? Told you you were ready. Thanks, boss. Oh, and Ivan. Yes? The, uh, next time you toss me one of these, do you think you could, uh... No. Aw, oh, come on. No, we talked about this already. I am not going to start calling you Booker every time I throw you a weapon. Fine. <laughs> That didn't sound or feel similar to the other two teleportations. Or, like, a good thing in general. Hey, uh, Duck? Did you happen to factor a differentiation algorithm into the system to account for the problems of teleporting more than one being at a time? No, I didn't. Why? Because I didn't. Oh, that is just the worst possible way that could have gone. Let's not ever transport two at a time again. Clearly a bad idea. Is that lightning? No. Plasma.